Hi, I'm here with Dan Andrews, and he's a research engineer on the PSA team. Hey, Dan. Hey, Jennifer. Tell me a little bit about what you do here. I'm a controls and automation engineer at the NASA Ames Research Center. My team is working on evolving the PSA robot vehicle. In designing the propulsion system for the PSA, we had to keep in mind that things move differently on the International Space Station than they do here on Earth. Jen, this would be a good time to see if students can describe two ways in which motion of something in the space station is different than the way things move on Earth. Dan, I think that's a great idea. Teachers, now is the time to pause the program, and students, write down two ways that you think items move differently in space than they do here on Earth. If you mention something about microgravity, well, you're on the right track. You may have seen microgravity on the International Space Station. It appears that items are floating on the International Space Station, but in fact, everything is moving or falling at the same rate. To learn more about microgravity, check out the NASA Connect program, Who Added the Micro to Gravity? So did you mention something about friction or lack of friction? Well, you're also on the right track. The motion of an object on the space station is like moving on ice or throwing a ball versus rolling it on the ground. This is a functional prototype of the PSA, which means it's a working model. We have also tested the prototype on a granite table, which has very little friction, like an air hockey table. So it's a simulation of what motion is like on the ISS. So Dan, how does the PSA move? In this functional prototype of the PSA, we're using fans. We have six sets of fans located around the robot. Air is drawn in from one side of the fans and expelled out the other side. That creates a force on the robot and enables the PSA robot to move. It's important that we use a quiet propulsion system because it's relatively noisy on the space station and we don't want to aggravate the problem. We also need to test the PSA in three dimensions. We need to allow it to move up and down, left and right, forward and backward. Within this facility, we've created a smart crane, which lets the PSA move as if it's in space. We use this crane to test how the PSA can do obstacle avoidance and just generally get around. Dan, aren't there some laws or uh, rules of motion that affect the way things move? That's right. There are laws of motion that apply whether you're here on Earth or on the ISS. Sir Isaac Newton figured out the laws of motion way back in the 1600s. He said that an object at rest will remain at rest. Sure, Dan, that, that makes sense. Uh, if something is sitting on a table, for instance, it will stay there until someone moves it or some force moves it away. Newton also said that once an object is in motion, it will keep moving unless you apply a force to it, like giving it a push or a pull. Now, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense to me. Doesn't everything just stop moving eventually? Things stop moving because of gravity and friction. In microgravity, you can really see Newton's laws at work. Let me see if I have this straight. If something is moving, it may or may not have a force acting on it. And to stop it, you have to apply a force? That's right. On the ISS, the PSA will float because of microgravity, and it will keep moving once you push it. So Newton was a pretty smart guy. I mean, he thought of this 300 years before NASA sent astronauts into space. Once you apply a force, like pushing the PSA, it will move and keep moving. In fact, the PSA will keep moving even if you turn the fans off and apply no force at all. Okay, so how do you stop the PSA? You have to turn the fans on again and apply a force in the opposite direction. Now you can check out the way the PSA will move on the ISS. Here's what Newton said. An object at rest will remain at rest. An object in motion will remain in motion unless a force acts on it.